So thank you all for coming, friends, fellow Toastmasters. Um, I appreciate you coming out here and listening to my icebreaker speech. So as my title says, um, being North American is what I'm here to talk to you about and what that means to me. So I consider myself North American, um, mostly because I have ties to Mexico, U.S., and Canada, and I'm going to explain to you how those ties all come together. Um, so my parents are Mexican, both of them. I know some people question, oh, just don't know. Both of them are from Mexico, and they moved to Texas um, uh, during the time my dad was going for his PhD. And at that time, um, my parents were married and decided to have children, so they had my sister, my older sister first, and then they had me in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, which is right next to Dallas. Um, so there, I really didn't grow up in Texas. I was only there until I was two, and my dad and my family moved uh, to Michigan because my dad was an engineer and worked for Chrysler. Um, so that's where I really grew up, in Troy, Michigan, so the Mercer Detroit area. So at the time, my parents still wanted to keep the Mexican culture in me, and so food was still very Mexican. Um, they spoke to me in Spanish, and my sister spoke to me in Spanish as well. But soon, that Spanish started to fade away, and it became more of an English, like I spoke more English than Spanish. I still understood Spanish, but my preference was to speak English, mostly because I had my older sister who would, she would put me down if I ever said one little thing wrong in Spanish. She always had a knack for correcting me, but in the worst way possible, just putting me down. So I learned Spanglish, and there was a time where I would speak a little bit of English and Spanish, and then eventually just English. Um, then I pretty much stayed, you know, I had a normal, uh, childhood here in the U.S. until one day my dad came to our family and said we're gonna move to Canada and he sounded kind of excited about it maybe because it was a great opportunity for him work-wise but for me and my sister and my mom that meant moving everything we knew to a new country so that's what we did we moved to Canada which is actually south of Detroit because we moved to Windsor so it's like kind of not really Canada because it's like the most southern part. But anyway, we moved um, and I had to learn a lot of new things, um, including how to say bathroom. Over in Canada, you don't say bathroom, you say washroom. And I had teachers who wouldn't let me go to the bathroom unless I said washroom. Um, very strict on that. For whatever reason, <laughs> it was very important for them. Um, also, things like donut holes. They're not called donut holes there. They're called tidbits. Um, generally speaking, I had to learn the metric system, and I was kind of OK at that. But what I really learned was I knew the, the for like temperature-wise, I knew Celsius when it was really cold. So I knew if it was a really, really cold day, it'd be like minus, I don't know, 6 or 7. And then if it was a warm day, I knew Fahrenheit. So I knew 70s was a nice day. 90s, ooh, it's going to be a scorcher. So people in Windsor and in Canada, they normally just use Celsius throughout, but I kind of used a mix match of the two. Um, the same goes for distances. I used a mix match of feet and miles and meters, and it just no one really understood what I was trying to say. Um, I also learned, or it really enforced my apologetic side in Canada. Many people apologize very frequently for things that aren't necessary. I have, uh, myself, I've gained that and I still struggle to this day to try not to apologize all the time for things that are unnecessary to apologize for. So, it's something I work on. Um, so, I did part of middle school and high school in Canada. And then for college, I went, I came back to the US. I came back to Detroit. Um, but it was actually interesting because I would commute back and forth. So I would live with my parents, and, and then I would um, take two buses to get to school, um, which was pretty interesting. So kind of what ended up happening was I had to relearn how to say things the American way and use what Canadians call a hard A 
Um, so I had to relearn that. So things like dad, you know, really emphasizing the A, I had to work on that again. But I also had to make sure that I knew the difference so that when I went back to Canada, I wouldn't be called out on it. And it was very, it's kind of a stressful time because I just didn't know what was going on. Anyway, after college, I was able to decide where I wanted to live because I could live in Canada or I could live in the U.S. Um, but ultimately, I decided I felt most at home in the U.S. And I felt most identified and connected here in the U.S. And I decided that's where I'm going to live. I still visit Canada. And my parents live there. And so I go, if not every week, every other week. Um, and I still go and I visit Mexico. Um, and I do that hopefully once a year if I'm able to. And so that is why I consider myself to be North American, and I'm proud of it. Thank you.